here in Kenya, but across the globe. Kenya is among the top three most targeted countries for cybercrime in Africa because of high internet uh, penetration. And uh, to help us understand more about this, so we're going to just jump right in into the interview and to, t to maybe kick us off, uh, maybe help us understand what is the state of online safety in Kenya, especially with a focus on the youth. To understand the current state of uh, online safety and especially the youth, it's been a journey. So we can take a few steps back and look at how it started. I embarked on this journey in December 2005, when back then we were on internet via satellite. We didn't have all the fiber C cables and we have very few users. 80% of Kenya's internet users were based in Nairobi. Uh, but over time, and uh, more so uh, with the introduction of the undersea cables, internet penetration in the country increased, and so are the good things that we use the internet for. But unfortunately, the bad things that also come uh, associated with the internet have also increased in the country. I would say that uh, with Ernest, the center staging of the issue of online safety, for especially for the youth, and specifically for the youth, gained very good ground in February 2005, when Kenya was celebrating the Safer Internet Day uh, on a large scale. And uh, we saw that time the issue coming center stage and youth getting a hold of the issue. And since then, it has progressively grown. Uh, more stakeholders have come on board and it has become adopted uh, by various agencies. For example, our partner, the Communication Authority of Kenya, another partner, Kenya Film Classification Board, another partner, the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development in terms of embedding it into teaching. And most importantly, we are very happy to say that the Kenya Scouts Association have been one of our greatest partner who have been spreading online safety throughout the country in all the 47 counties and i'm glad to say that the, the trend the trajectory we are taking is going to get even better uh, so that i could summarize as the current state and more actors especially state and non-state actors have center staged online safety okay now the rapid growth of uh, internet use has opened a world of possibilities including educational opportunities and virtual schooling witnessed throughout the COVID-19 period. Now it has also opened up uh, or rather it has uh, brought increased concerns and challenges in relation to youth online safety. Perhaps maybe help us understand what are the emerging concerns and challenges in relation to youth online safety in the country? Very well. Um, there are many issues, but for the purposes of today, I want to focus on one soft issue which is of concern to literally everybody. And this issue is to do with online sexual exploitation and abuse. And this is affecting, it's becoming a more serious problem because it's a softer issue. They are the harder issue, a little bit harder because they're like password, security, you know, other softer issues, oversharing. But I want to focus on that issue because it's of concern to parents. And as a parent and many other parents are also concerned. And we would like the internet to be used for the good purposes it is. But again, we cannot, uh, uh, we, we cannot emphasize enough the safety of youth and especially girls and women online it's threatened and this is an area that um, I would like to refer to a report on online uh, sexual exploitation and abuse which was recently published by Thomson Reuters so as media people you probably will relate with the, uh, with the issues raised there and they identified in a nutshell four areas one of them is the fact that there is a lack of an international definition and because the internet is borderless it's, uh, you find this issue a problem will happen in Kenya, it's being perpetrated by somebody in Uganda, the servers are in China, and maybe the users are in Russia and America and Europe and all other places. So you find to get a proper definition of what that constitutes so that then the, the, the instrument that defines what is abuse in Kenya is the same as in China, as in Russia, in all the other countries of the world. This has been lucky because the internet has grown faster than actually the, uh, the jurisdictions are able to, uh, to, to, do, to accommodate. Then the lack of laws that are harmonized in terms of dealing with this issue is another issue that was identified as, as wanting. So Kenya may pass certain laws, but if the application, the app that people are using is based in another country, again, what about the jurisdiction of the laws that apply? These have been other challenges that are emerging and they need to be dealt with. So uh, the jurisdiction is another one. 
Um, there is also a very interesting issue, and for me being in the civil society, uh, human rights and technology rights and justice, this became as a very interesting uh, issue because on one hand I'm promoting online freedom, digital rights, privacy, uh, and all this freedom should be promoted. On the other hand, we cannot forget that they are children, so we need to protect, so we have to look at issues of stopping certain access, aka also known as censorship. And again, we have to look at this issue in a way that is balanced. It's nuanced so that it's not used as a tool to censor the internet, but at the same time we don't expose children to harms online. So this is an issue that requires all stakeholders' involvement, government, private sector, and non-state actors, human rights, working together to address the concerns that are legitimate and also ensures the legitimate uses and freedoms online are not, are not uh, curtailed as a result of that. Um, the, the final question I would want to say is, has to do with the regulation of the platform that we use. You find um, it's, so far it has been self regulation. You know, each, I don't want to mention names of these platforms that are used online, but there are very many of them. There is no law that de 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 demands that they regulate what is going to be there. Again, again back to the definition what is the definition of what is going to be there so they have been doing it by themselves but the lack of a standard of what constitutes uh, an offense or like criminal content or illegal content or harmful content to children has not been there they do well as we thank them at least for the effort but the fact that they have been uh, doing it on their own uh, the models at which they adopt could be better, and I think I'm happy that some of them are actually doing a good job, and uh, at least uh, we, we are getting somewhere. So those are some of the issues I could highlight as uh, some of the challenges, uh, emerging challenges in this sector. Right. Now, you mentioned that women and girls are among the most vulnerable groups. And maybe why are women and the youth the most vulnerable in terms of online uh, sex exploitation? Uh, yeah, the, the simple way to answer that question is to look at uh, society as it is and ask ourselves if the viewer were given the master keys to the internet and you're told here you are, you have the master keys to the internet, what would you do with the internet? Um, if you're a thief, you would use it for a lot of criminal theft. If you're a preacher, you'd use it to spread the word of God. Uh, if you're an educator and so forth, if you're police, you'd be there chasing criminals. So the idea is people have different motives and the motives they have, they transfer them online. Now, when they meet online, problems now emerge because everybody is on the same platform and then they are trying to figure out how to resolve their issues. You look again at society, how society is structured. Uh, so again, we have men domineering. Uh, they are the ones who have been women and girls underprivileged, uh, oppressed, you know, we've just had in the news about even certain practices that are actually bad for women and girls. And again, these things are transferred online. So the structure of society in terms of the disadvantaged, the vulnerable and the weak, again, these are reflected in society. Um, we are heading into the campaign season and you will find the insults that are going to be leveled against women political aspirants. And I think media ladies who are there also know that some of the insults that are actually held at you are not the same as those held to us, the dudes. When a sexy statement is uh, made about a guy, he says, yeah, he's the man, you know, he's, he's a man. But it's done that to a woman. It's demeaning. It is, can be very harmful and, again, psychologically, even traumatizing. So then you find the same thing as women. Uh, it's happening in society. They are transferred online. Children also who are disadvantaged and they have all these challenges in society and we have had very sad cases you find again online they are the ones who are now more prone you know young impressionable mites are the ones that again are harassed and and they are oppressed and exploited online and I also want to recognize also some of the efforts that have been done by some of the uh, security agencies uh, not so long ago I visited DCI offices at South Sea uh, somewhere where they actually do the monitoring of uh, this online uh, harm to children and uh, I want to announce that, but after I watched what those policemen have been doing, I had to ask them a simple question. How do you sleep at night after you have seen some of these things? Some of them said, I'm glad you asked. Some of us actually need counseling because some of the things that happen online are really terrible. So that's a threat and it's an indicator that these problems exist and nobody is making it out. But at the same time, let's not forget that the internet is wonderful, is what we use for learning with this COVID. It's helped businesses, all this online shopping. And so it's a wonderful tool, but it must be used with a lot of guidance, caution and protecting the vulnerable, especially women and children and girls. 
Well, uh, there you have it. This is an enlightening conversation on the online uh, safety partners or the stakeholders such as uh, the Communications Authority of Kenya and the private sector players such as Google and Code IP are doing or rather what in the future are they going, what measures are they going to implement so as to make the online safe, the online space safe for all. Alex? Uh, yes, um, we uh, at Code IP Trust um, always believe in partnership towards addressing this uh, issue, multi-stakeholderism. And so using that model, we work very closely with the Communications Authority of Kenya. We work very closely with the Kenya Film Classification Board. We work closely with other agencies I mentioned earlier, Ministry of Education, Ministry of ICT, who have been very supportive, and of course, even Semastia and many other institutions. Now, we are also fortunate um, that since uh, 2015 in February, when we launched Web Rangers, which is a program that is supported by Google, uh, where youth become the ambassadors of good and responsible use of the internet, empowering them with the skills, uh, knowledge, and tools to be able to be good champions of uh, spreading good use. And you see, with this peer influence, you find now it's better. Instead of uh, teachers aid top down, they now talk amongst themselves. And the Web Rangers program has actually succeeded so well. Uh, in Africa, it's only in Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa. Started in Israel in 2010, 2011. And uh, Kenya is fortunate that uh, being chosen to run that program has now uh, spread out to the whole country in all the 47 counties, courtesy of our great partners, the Kenya Scouts Association. Uh, the Scouts, we say that uh, failure is not an option, and we pick something, it goes uh, very, very countrywide, and we go very far. Remember, Scouting is the largest uh, youth organization in, in Africa and the, the, sixth, uh, uh, the sixth largest in the world with over 2.1 million uh, members. So what we have been doing is that we have been uh, teaching, we started off by training the trainers uh, a couple of years ago. Then the trainers went on and started training uh, the other people who are now going to go to the, the scouts. These were volunteers. Later on, we were fortunate that the patron of Kenya Scouts, His Excellency, the President, appointed uh, 47 uh, teachers to be Kenya Scouts coordinators. These ones take one day a week to go to different schools within their counties to preach uh, amongst uh, scouting values, online safety. So with that, we have had hundreds of thousands of students trained. and We don't leave parents also. We have a program that is uh, digital parenting, which actually Google launched uh, during the Safer Internet Day on Tuesday this week, uh, which was hosted by KFCB. And uh, we also had trained teachers. So the teachers are trained, the youth are empowered, and they are also trained, and the parents. So you then find the whole family becomes now empowered to deal with the issues that are, are happening. I would also be, it would be fair also to mention other efforts that are being done by other stakeholders. We recognize what the Communication Authority of Kenya has been doing. They have got a program called Be the Cop, which we have been part of, supporting it and collaborating with them. And last year, uh, the First Lady uh, actually launched a phase two of that program. So we work very close with CA. I'm aware also private sector, uh, other than Google, who, whom are, are my partners, so I can mention, but other companies also have um, uh, initiatives that they are supporting. So that's what I could say is, uh, uh, is happening right now in the industry. And also non actors do have small programs here and there, and the issue is getting bigger and bolder, and we welcome that. Right. As we wind up, perhaps uh, what are your closing remarks? Uh, my closing remarks is that um, when you, if you're a parent um, and you take care of your child, um, if you took them to a forest, would you let your child wander freely uh, in the jungle? And if you can't do that, why do you let your child wander freely uh, roaming on this internet cyberspace? You must learn how to take your child, care of your child online in as much as the same way you do in the streets of Nairobi, capital cities, in the forest, in the jungles. You can't leave your child on their own. Learn with them, walk with them, teach them, protect them, because at the end of the day, the fundamental care, the primary care of a child rests with the parent, not the government. Government comes in to support parents. Those would be my parting remarks. And thanking Google for Web Rangers and Kenya Scouts. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Well, uh, there you have it. Uh,